Yo tengo una pregunta. ¿Vale? Eh, ¿Qué versión de... live okay, perfect Okay, so we'll start our first tutorial. The record the tutorial I'll present of again. I'm Carlos Castillo, CA of course. And uh, the first tutorial, the tutorial zero, I'll just talk a, li a little bit about Python. Python was created 30 years ago by Ido and Rosum. The Python philosophy is basically to do simple code. It's a very high level programming language. In contrast, uh, another programming languages that are more complicated as C++, Java, have a, a little uh, ugly syntax. But in Python, everything is like you, you would expect. It's almost like talking in English. I'll show examples about that later, but just bear with me a, a little bit. And now, for those of you that don't have Python, you can install it very easily by going to the Python website here. Or, what, what I would suggest is to install Anaconda. You can also install it uh, doing this in some operating But I would suggest to install Anaconda or Canopy, whatever you want. Personally, I think Anaconda is a little bit better. And the benefits of installing Anaconda instead of installing Python directly is that Anaconda comes pre-installed with a lot of packages that you will install anyway, as NumPy and Matplotlib. And also comes with the yeah, IDE, I'm gonna start programming right away. Uh, Anaconda has bundles with Python 2.7 and 7. I suggest, as we have already talked, to use the 3.7, as now the 2.7 version of Python is deprecated. On a, not a lot of software maintains a uh, Python version. Now, as you're seeing now, I'm using not just plain Python, I'm using what it's called a Jupyter Notebook. And the Jupyter Notebook um, is an initiative to try to make code easier. And the name Jupyter comes from three programming languages. One is Julia, another one is Python, the one I will be teaching uh, right now, and R. R is a well-known programming language for statistics. And they are inspired in Galileo's uh, notebook about the discovery of the moon, Jupiter. This is always the example they, they show. This, uh, that guy, Galileo, if you And this is what uh, Galileo's notebook looked like, right? And as you can see now, this is your original Jupyter notebook, but Jupyter not referring to the, this programming uh, tool, but the planet. This is the drawing of, of Jupiter, the moons, and as you can see, it has text 
interleaved with graphics or something else. And this is basically the same idea that, of what we'll be doing now, but instead of just text and figures, it will be text and code and figures and whatever you want. And there's mainly three types of um, cell that you can use. I'll explain a little bit about what is a cell later. One is called markdown cell. Basically, here you can write text, just plain text. Then you have the code cell, that is where you type uh, Python code. And you can also have interactive cells that I will display right now. Uh, but for that, uh, to open a Jupyter Notebook, you can do it with this command in the terminal. Uh, I need to ask something first. Uh, of you, how many have a Windows? I do, I do. One. I also. Okay, because everything related with the programming is a little bit more complicated <laughs> with Windows. And if you want to install Python, in, you can also install Anaconda. And this command, uh, you can also run it, but in the PowerShell or in the command line. Okay, so if you're not familiar with that, uh, Need to be a little bit more familiar now because. We... But if you don't want to use the terminal, uh, terminal, and you just want to double click the file, you can install this called Interact. That is basically a program that does exactly that converts the Jupyter notebooks uh, to a. Well, it doesn't convert any, uh, the Jupyter notebook to anything. It's just a program to open them, and you can uh, immediately start programming in them. Because here to run the Jupyter notebook, I had to run a command in the terminal to open it, and then I can start. Programming. So if you don't want to do that every time you want to program in Python, you can download the code. Sorry, this program. But why are we interested in programming uh, at all? Jorge, do you have a question? Alex? Or an answer of have Windows on? Why are we interested in programming? Well, um, a lot of time, you're doing a task millions of times, or just enough times that you don't want to do them anymore by hand. And basically with a programming language, what you can do is to automate them by creating a function that does exactly that. For example, usually what you want to do with data is to first open a file, then read the file, then for example, do a processing of the data, let's say filter or, you know, depending on your field could be a lot of things. And then you want to, for example, plot the results. And uh, if you are doing this a lot of, lot of, of times, a little bit uh, time consuming, so basically what you're doing here with programming is to create a function that does that for you automatically. And then you can do, I don't know, 10 files by just running that program. And here I'm, I'm showing a, a function as something that receives a number and, and the output is a number, but it could be whatever. It could be a file name and the output could be a graph or Python. You can do a lot of stuff that not as straightforward as number in, number out. For example, a more complicated function could be a artificial intelligence model that receives an image. And then the output is a region of that image that has cancer, for example. But that's good and all. But before 
trying to build the little figure, you need to understand the steps, right? You need to know and understand the different elements of in this case Python. That's what we'll start doing today. Now I'll VLTA. Okay, so now we'll start with Python. The first thing we'll define is what it's called a variable. A variable is basically a container, a little box in which we can save numbers, strings, strings uh, are num uh, sorry, are words, this one. And uh, there's many types of variables, but in this tutorial, I'll be explaining uh, mathematical operations between numbers and some string manipulation, but not a, a lot. Okay, so how do we create a variable in Python? Is as easy as the name of the variable equals the thing you want to store. For example, in this case, I'm storing the number two, that is an integer, to the variable x. Here, the name of the variable is y, and I'm storing the float 5.0. The difference between an integer and a float, the, the float number basically has decimal, a uh, decimal point. The integer is just an integer. Like one, two, three, four, minus one, zero. And you can also uh, save text. For example, here, this could be, for example, uh, the file name of your data. Here, I just put hey and run it. See that just run this cell. And there's a function called print of the most useful functions that you see, that basically you can put a variable inside them and they print the, the value. For example, x plus y plus five equals seven. You can see it's printing 7.0. That means that the two was casted to a float and then they were added together. You don't understand what casting is uh, don't worry just know that when you're doing things with decimals the number will turn out decimal uh, Jorge ask if I'll be uploading Jupyter notebook canvas yes the video and the Jupyter notebook will be in canvas after the another thing about the print function is that if you put a comma between two things, it will print with a space. For example, if I put comma and three, put a space and then the three. You can print multiple thing, uh, things at once. Okay, so the operators that I'll show here are arithmetic operators. That means that they operate with variables that are numbers. And obviously, you know what addition is? Plus sign adds two numbers. Minus sign subtracts uh, one number from the other. Division, this is a little different between Python uh, 2 and 3. Just doing one. Uh, a slash is a float division Python 3. So if you have a float, sorry, if you have an integer and you divide just one slash, then you divide by two, for, for example, 
it will return 0 0.5. Python 2, it would return 0. Uh, I'll show that uh, in a little Then we have the percent operator. That is uh, the remainder of a division. For example, if you have 3 percent 2, it will divide 3 by 2. That, uh, that is 1 plus the remainder that is also 1. So that operation would be 1. Multiplication, not that difficult. Uh, just multiplies two numbers. That's the difference between. Oh, I, but I can do it. Example very quickly. Okay, so let's say for example that x equals to three, y is equal to two. I have the addition plus y. Okay, that's five. That's Hope that doesn't sur surprise anyone here. Then you have, for example, minus operator. You have the application. Have... And that's the difference between one slash and two slash. Okay, so this is what it's called the float division. Let's put it like that. But it's called the that means that the output. Carlos? Yes. And, and what, what does the, um, the left command mean? I mean, in 10, uh, because it's not the number of lines. The number of lines and it says in 10. So, right. what's the meaning of uh, the meaning of what part? Sorry, and the left part of the notebook says in 10, two points. Okay, this is and so, uh, don't worry about that. That's the only meaning of that is that it, this is my 10th input to the notebook. Okay, okay, okay. For example, see the notebook, this is the 10th input. Here, the fourth, third uh, code cell, so on. If I run, for example, this code cell again, now it says 11th input. That's the only meaning of that is the order in which you run the cells. Every time you run a cell, the input number this is by one. And uh, I didn't explain it, but I'm running these cells by pressing Control plus Enter. You do Shift plus Enter, run the code cell, but go to the next one as well. And here in the Jupyter Notebooks, you also have Keyboard shortcuts, cell tab, control plus enter, runs the cell, shift, enter, runs the cell, and select the cell below. Number not related with the code is just to show how many code cells I, I have run. So, for example, if I run this cell again, now it's the fifteenth. Don't don't worry about that. That's not part of the code. Okay, so I was explaining the the difference between the float float division and the integer division, and as you can see, the only difference is that the output of the division is a float in the first case, one point five or a decimal number. 
but here the point five the point five is missing because it does a it, it removes the floating point part just an interest. and this gives very weird results sometimes for example if you one divided by two you expect output to be 0 0.5 but in python 0.7 you would get uh, you would get zero so they change it in the version 3 of python that's why um, uh, the difference basically what you want to do with the flow division is that what you would uh, would expect when and the last thing is the power I believe you have you would expect the power to be this symbol right but in Python it's not that it's asterisk be raised to the second power nine Anyone has any doubts? Or I have a... What what was the difference between the the integer division and the the, the double slash and the percentage uh, symbol? Ah, okay, okay, okay. Uh, I, I, I took... uh, the percent uh, a modulus operator. Mm. What it does is that it does the division. This division, as you know one you only consider the integer part but the remainder of this division is also one um let me put five so it's five okay so the division between 5 and 2 is 2.5, right? But if you consider mm -hmm. like the integer division, as we would learn in school, the answer of how many times does it fit 2 in 5, 2, right? Mm -hmm. But some part of 5 is missing. That's the remainder. That is 1. Okay. So basically, when you do a division, x divided by by y, that gives you the result. That is the something <laughs> plus remainder, and the remainder of the division is percentage y. Okay. Thank you. Uh, why would that be useful? You can start questioning yourself. Because you have if you have a lot of numbers, say a vector one two. That, that is uh, called a list, by the way. And you do the operation this, you would get the odd and the even numbers. I think right now it would work because it doesn't support lists, but Part of that okay so for example you have a list of numbers and you want to know which number is even which number is all you can do the remainder after dividing by two 
and if the remainder is zero, that means that the number is divis divisible by two. And by doing that, for example, you can have some files, uh, you apply some procedure, and then the even and the other files, you can separate them in different uh, pipelines. And this thing that I imported here is NumPy, and we explain a little bit why it's, it's so useful. As you have already seen in Python, lists of, uh, the lists of numbers are not very useful. <laughs> like. By default, number li uh, list of numbers are not that useful because a lot of functions doesn't do not work in them. But by importing this thing called NumPy and using this arrays, NumPy arrays, you're gonna start applying these operators lists. But Let's uh, talk a lot about a little bit more basic Python. Another part of Python that is very useful are the relation operators. Okay, so for example, if you have x equal to one, and you want to know that number is equal to one or is not equal to one, you can use these operators. For example, set is equal to one. So it will tell me that is true. Something is true or false. This double equal sign means if it is equal to. You have a bang equal, then it means if not equal to. So the negation of that. that this asks uh, the question, is set not equal to one? False. The opposite, because one is true, the other one needs to be false. Another thing we could ask that if set is less than one, for example, and set is not less than one because it's equal to one. Set less than three, say that is true. You can also do greater by using the opposite sign. This asks the question set is equal, uh, sorry, is uh, greater than three? The answer is false because it's. You can also ask the question if is greater or equal. We need to add this equal after the ask if it's less or equal for the sign. Another thing we you notice with uh, this example, the relational operators do a comparison, but it does not give me a number or a string. It gives me a true or false value, right? These true or false values are called booleans. A boolean is something that is just one or zero, true or false. You can do operations with boolean numbers also. For example, you can ask set is less or equal than one, or is also greater than zero. And you have a, a truth value associated, and obviously you have or, and also and. So you can verify a condition is met. With these two and operate. 
These are very common in programming. Will be used. Okay, so Python has a lot of built-in functions. You don't need to read, uh, sorry, write every function that you need to use, as it will be the case for other programming languages. Has a lot of functions that are built-in. One of them, the int function, which converts a, a string or whatever to, a, to an integer. For example, here, this decimal number 7.7, .7, if you use the function int, it just cuts the decimal part and you can see that the answer is seven. Here, what I'm doing is trying to convert a string or a word okay, that it only says seven. And Python tries to do what is closest and correctly identifies that it's also seven. And after convert variable to int, you can do your usual operators, for example, adding two, dividing by something, etc. And you have the same as the function int, but in reverse, you have the function string that converts whatever it's inside to a string. You can see it adds the, I'm not sure how, quotation mark. Okay, so a string has quotation marks, a number does not have. Okay, so another very useful uh, built-in function is the rounding function. You just do round of a number, will try to convert it to an integer. But you can also specify the number of decimal places you want to round the number. For example, here, I'm rounding the number to the second decimal place. That converts this tail to just adding one to this, and therefore you obtain 4.56. All of the functions I'm showing here will also work with the NumPy arrays or, or with the lists of numbers. Okay, so another quite useful thing is to define a complex number. I'm not sure if you have seen complex numbers yet in the course. Someone confirm that? Have you seen Not yet, I think. No, not no? yet. Okay. Silly complex numbers for the one the people that don't know are an extension of the real numbers. Basically, you have the real axis and you have another axis that is called the imaginary axis. And this plane that is generated numbers are called the, the complex numbers or, that are in the complex plane, it's a plane of numbers. So you have a component as the real part and another component that is the imaginary part that is denoted by j. In Python, by default, you can use complex numbers just by adding the real part with a complex or imaginary part. In this case, you don't need to multiply by j, just put the number and finish with j. And the complex numbers are a point in the plane, so they have a, a magnitude that is the length of the distance between the origin and the point. But if what complex numbers are, uh, it doesn't make much sense to explain it now. We'll be thinking more about them in Peter TAs. Don't worry. But complex numbers are very useful uh, for medical imaging. A lot of medical images actually um, do a lot of stuff in complex numbers. For example, MRI. MRI is signal acquisition. The theory is 
completely written in, in complex numbers and see that uh, see the Fourier transform have something to be excited about when you see the, the it has real applications not all math Okay, and another very useful function is the range function, which uh, is used to create lists of numbers. And the syntax is basically this one. If you just put one argument, argument by the by the way is what it's inside the parentheses of the function. For example, if you put n equals to three, then three plus one or the range of four will create a list of four numbers starting from zero uh, until n minus one. If you, instead of putting one number, you put two, you'll be specifying the beginning and the end. For example, b is 13, be the last number, and a, the beginning first number of this list. In Python, uh, the range function is uh, programmed in a way that you need to do, to specify the ending by adding one. In, a, in other programming languages, when you do functions like range, you don't need to add this plus one, but it's something you need to take care of in Python. Every time you specify the ending of a range, you need to add the one of what you really wanted to put. And um, well, the last use of this function is that if you put the beginning of the this list, the ending of this list, this is the interval in which we'll be adding numbers. For example, the x here is two, no, sorry, three. So we'll start at two, then add three, five, then add three again, at three again until you reach a number that is less than thirteen. In this case, is eleven. If you add three again, you have fourteen. That is bigger than uh, thirteen, so that's why it stops. Uh, another very useful function is the input function. For example, here you put input, and inside the function you put a string with the question. For example, here is what's your favorite number? What is your favorite number? And if you do that, you will create a box. You can put your number, three. And then it will save the input, just uh, put in the box to this variable, abc. One thing you need to be aware of is that after writing the input, this ABC will be a string. That means that you need to convert it to an int, for example, in this case, to really have a number. If you can do that, you'll have a, a string and it will not work. Here you can see that I introduce a function that is called the type function. The type function basically calls you the type of the variable. In this case, abc was a string. So if we print the type of the function, this class a string. For example, instead of abc, I put two, that is a number. It will say that the class is an integer. Put 2.1, will say that the class is float. So on. This one, this function, you can use it be sure that the variable type is what you, you would expect. Okay. Okay, so a, a lot of um, theory, right? But I want to do uh, activity. As this is the first TA, I don't expect you to have Python installed. But if some of you have in would you want to do the activity and share your screen so 
of the participants can help. And, oh, sorry, uh, Jorge. All these functions are loaded when you do format import. No. Sorry, I skipped the, the question. From math import all, the only thing that imports is this complex function. I would need to check, but I think this syntax of the complex numbers are uh, is by default. You don't need to import anything. And, and probably complex also. The, the things that math imports are the absolute value math, and the square root. Square root the square root is not uh, in default Python, you need to import math to it. So with the absolute sorry for skipping the question. Okay, so um, let's to this activity. The first activity is to ask the, the user for her or his favorite number and then display the number multiplied by 13 and then add one half then divide by three. Should be quite simple. So the first activity was to ask for the favorite number and do these operations to the favorite number. You can see here that I put this hashtag symbol Instagram users. This in Python is a comment, the start of a comment. So all of the things after the hashtag symbol are not considered uh, when you run the code. For example, if I run this cell, it does nothing because it's just a comment. But if you do x equals to two, it will ignore the comment and run this. Okay, so someone remembers how to ask the user for their input. in the chat. So do it to do all x to input. We'll ask what favorite okay. Do that put the text right side a box my favorite number is seven. That's already done. Okay, but now I need to print number, right? Let's try to print the number like that. Okay, that I didn't have a, a good question. What's the difference between putting double quotation marks or a simple code. In Python, it doesn't matter. You can use both and you. Sample this is the same as the other. See, it works either way with double quotation marks or simple single quotation marks. And the shift um, switch slash uh, n. Ah. You want to know what this does? Yes. This um, is a special character in a strings that goes way back, the times 
we use typewriters and you have a roll of paper and when you write a lot you have the end of the line and what you need to do to start writing to the second uh, line as the roll will be moving to the right is put it at the beginning again that is what it's called a carry return character and basically what it means in modern times is that it prints another another line okay Okay. Okay, so as you can see when you add this special character backslash n, the only difference between the previous example and this one is that we put the input box uh in another line. This is a new line character. Add line. Okay, so if we want to print X, wait, didn't answer the question. Oh, okay, I, I think we need to. Okay, you have this seven. I try to print the number. Sorry, <laughs> I put the seven. I... So I just do this. Number seven is saved in the variable x, and then I can print it. What if I try to do x plus two? Gives me an error. Why is that? You need to convert it as an integer. Exactly. Uh, this is a very important skill in programming. As you can see here, we have an error. Very scary. It says type error. It says that you cannot concatenate a string with the integer. Why, why does it say concatenate instead of addition? Because when you have a string, for example, i. Are you the plus means concatenation of both? So for Python that does not know what you want to do, x is a string, and you you are trying to concatenate something to the string that is a number, and it says a type error because you cannot do that because there are different types. What you need to do is to convert x to an integer. And then do the plus two, and then it works. And Jose Manuel, uh, I think did the correct uh, thing. If you do print in here seven, then if you want to multiply by thirteen, do asterisk times thirteen, and then divide. No, sorry, add one half to the result, and then divide by three. That's, but that that is not a. Um, it's not a general solution. Just what happens if my number was three point two? Then I'm casting it to an integer and and I'm missing the decimal part. So to cover that case, there's another function that it's called float. And it's basically the same, but it works with a decimal number. Everyone is understanding what doing? 
Yes. There's someone here that is completely lost and and he does not know what I'm doing. You can say that I not uh, be offended. I need to be. But maybe after the English part, talk a little bit. Okay, and uh, the other activity is to display the even numbers from 2 until 13. And uh, what function would be useful for that? The, uh, an array and the module? Arranged. Arranged, yeah. For example, if I modify my variable x, the function range, the number from 2 13 okay what happens if i just put 13 uh, it creates the the list but what happens if i print on that it says range from 0 to 13 that's not very informative <laughs> so range i didn't say it but it's a special object why it is a special object because this range uh, could be, for example, until this very big number, but you don't want to uh, save this very big list of numbers. You just want to uh, save the beginning and the end and what to add every time. And then you are settled. You don't need to exactly save all the numbers. This means that if, for example, I do range 13, to convert it to an actual list, what I need to do is use the function list of x, and then it stores the, the numbers. This is a list, and the range object does not or uh, yes, understand. But uh, you need to print from from two until um, yes, um, until thirteen. Yes, if. A good point. If I just put range 13, it would print the numbers between 0 and 12. Okay? Yeah. So if I add a 1, it prints the numbers between 0 and now includes 13 because you need to remember that range does not include the ending. For example, the number 14 is not included in the list. And. If I wanted to start the, the numbers from 2, to do 2, now the list starts from 2, but it only says that to display the even numbers, and the even numbers are separated from two numbers in between, right? So I need to specify also the step, and the step in this case is also 2. Now I'm saying start from 2, end in, four, in 13, and um, go uh, with a step of 2, two uh, then 2 plus 2, then 4 plus 2, and these are only the even numbers. And as you can see, uh, 13 is not included because 13 is not an even number. Not uh, in this range.
Because there's uh, more stuff here with complex numbers and the triangular inequality if you want to check it yourself. They are in red. But I, I think I need for this TA. It would be great to stop here. We need to a, a lot of uh, yet, but maybe let's let's finish here. And the next day we can uh, the other part. Now we'll start the Spanish. I'll end the recording and start asking Spanish.